Hey everybody, this is TJR. If this is your first time here, welcome. If not, welcome back. And recently I was discussing the repressing of the Rolling Stones in mono that will be out in just a few weeks. And I uh, saw a comment from one of our viewers that I wanted to address here in this video. This comment is from viewer Brian Cunningham 3155. And he writes, I'm 67 years young and have been a Beatles as well as Stones fan since 1964. So first of all, right off the bat, Brian, you are awesome. Uh, at, in 1964, I was just trying to learn how to walk, I think. Um, let me go on here with what he says. That being said, over the years, I welcomed the evolution of recorded music. And with the recent remixing of the original albums, I could never get excited about mono recordings ever again. This particular box set of the Stones in Mono had zero interest for me. Should we go back to WAC 78 RPM pressings or Edison cylinders? The recent incarnation of Peter Jackson's Get Back and having his technicians separate the single tracks was like listening to brand new recordings. I did buy the Revolver Super Deluxe box set, but I have no interest in listening to the mono version. Just my humble opinion. And Brian, if you have no interest, that's fine. But I thought I should use this comment to discuss why you might be interested in listening to recordings from this era. And I'm talking about the early to mid-late 60s, why some mono recordings might be of interest to listen to and why a lot of music fans do have an interest in them. Uh, so first of all, one of the first things I would discuss is the rather primitive technology that was available for stereo recordings at the time and just how limited it was. These limitations created some very extreme, hard left and right stereo separation, unlike what we have today. For this reason alone, many fans feel that mono mixes from this era, era excuse me, from this era of popular music and rock and roll offer a more full and enjoyable listening experience than the more primitive stereo of the time. And again, I'm referring to that very hard left and right separation. A good example uh, using the Beatles is that when comparing the track Please Please Me, I found the 2009 Monomaster to have a much beefier, tougher, and tighter sound than the 2009 Stereo Remaster. In addition, I can make a more Beatles specific argument as to why you should listen to the Beatles in mono in addition to listening to it in stereo. Simply put, the mono versions are the versions that the Beatles and producer George Martin put all of their efforts into during this time period. These are the versions that they wanted you to hear. The stereo versions were just something that had to be done afterwards to please a small market less effort and thought was put into them. And in many cases, the Beatles themselves were not involved. Reportedly, George Martin's involvement in the stereo mixes would sometimes vary. And in some cases, it would be put into the hands of another engineer entirely. It's ironic that for decades, after stereo took over and mono faded away, that we were all listening to what would I would probably best describe as the afterthought mixes of the Beatles catalog. But there are other reasons why the Beatles and Mono offer a different listening experience from their stereo counterparts and why you might want to give them a try. Sometimes studio effects were used in the Mono versions that got completely washed out when they were transferred to stereo. For instance, on the Mono version of Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, there is this very weird phasing effect on John Lennon's voice. This effect was completely washed out in the stereo version. There is a similar occurrence on the track Tomorrow Never Knows from Revolver. The guitar solo in mono has an unusual sound effect that gives it a more menacing and mysterious quality. Again, it is completely washed out in the stereo version. Other times, completely different vocal takes were used as well. John Lennon's lead vocal take on Help in the mono version is completely different from the stereo version. On the stereo version of If I Fell, Paul's voice actually cracks at the 1 minute and 45 second mark. 
you won't hear his voice cracking in the mono version. Got to Get You Into My Life off Revolver has a longer fade out with additional horn swells in the mono mix versus the stereo version. At the end of the first verse of Paperback Writer, there is a very pronounced echo delay effect on Paul's voice. You won't hear that in the stereo version. She's Leaving Home from Sgt. Pepper is slightly faster in mono than in stereo. Neither one is better than the other, they're just different. It's a subtle difference, but I was struck by how amazing it affects you when you hear it at a slightly different speed. John Lennon is quoted as saying that you haven't heard Sgt. Pepper until you've heard it in mono. And I have to agree that the mono version was better than its original stereo counterpart. And ever since getting the 2009 stereo remasters and mono master set, the mono version of Sgt. Pepper has been my preferred version. But with all this said, the stereo mixes are not without their advantages over their mono counterparts. Helter Skelter, for instance, has the very infamous fade up after the fade out, wherein Ringo shouts out, I've got blisters on my fingers. In the mono version, there is no fade up. It just fades out. It's one of the few times where I prefer the stereo version over the mono version. I could go on. There are more examples of this throughout the Beatles catalog, but I'm going to stop there just kind of to give you an idea. Now, however, though, with the Rolling Stones, it's a very different story. The mono mixes of the Stones' 60s catalog are not considered the preferred version by the band. You also won't hear unique audio differences, such as a different vocal take or an audio effect that was later washed out in stereo in the mono and, ver and stereo versions of their albums. You won't hear that when you compare them. But with all that said, just like I did with Please Please Me, I had a similar experience comparing the UK version of Aftermath in stereo and in mono. The mono version of Aftermath felt beefier than its stereo counterpart. But I didn't necessarily feel that way with some of the later Rolling Stones 60s albums like, say, Let It Bleed. But I definitely chose the mono version of Aftermath as my preferred version over its stereo version after hearing it. At the end of the day, this is all a matter of choice. I'm not saying that anybody watching this video has to listen to these albums in mono. But what I can say in regards to the Beatles catalog is that even if you prefer stereo, the mono catalog of the Beatles does offer some rather unique and interesting variations on this catalog that you're probably going to be very intrigued to hear. Anyways, those are my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are on all of this. What are some of your favorite albums to listen to in mono versus stereo or vice versa? Brian Cunningham, 3155, I want to thank you very much for a really great comment and something that I could sink my teeth into and make a video out of. Whatever you choose to do, just enjoy the music. And I'll say that to everybody watching right now. This is TJR, and if you like this video, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon. I want to thank my patron supporters who are helping me make more videos. Patron supporters do receive exclusive weekly videos not available here on this channel. And if you can't be a patron supporter but still want to do a little something extra, there is now a new special give button here underneath this video that allows you to make a one-time donation in regards to this video. So if you enjoyed this video and want to make a one-time donation, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. Mostly though, I want to thank you all for watching, for spending some time, and just really appreciate you making it here to the end of the video. Everybody take care. Hope you all stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.